with the road to Athens taking the Stronger by Science world by storm, everybody's <laughs> crazy about it. Uh, there's a lot of questions about cardio these days. So someone asked me, is high intensity interval training better than low or moderate intensity steady state for uh, for body composition purposes? So looking at different approaches to cardio, high intensity interval intervals versus steady state exercise. Uh, and also, what are some good interval training protocols and how do you gauge intensity for those protocols? So uh, I had a very recent article in Mass that was about this. There was a meta-analysis by James Steele and colleagues, and James is very, very good at doing research, uh, so highly recommend his work. Um, they looked at a big old group of studies comparing steady state versus interval type training. They were specifically looking at changes in fat mass and fat-free mass, so looking at body composition. Uh, and what they found was no meaningful difference in terms of fat loss or gains in fat-free mass. So fairly modest effect for both outcomes. Uh, in both cases, they lost about a quarter of a kilogram of fat and gained like a tenth of a kilogram of fat-free mass, um, which is an important point. So first of all, cardio or endurance type exercise, uh, it's great for a lot of things, um, but it's independent effects on weight loss really are not that big. So um, a lot of times some people say, oh, I'm going to take up running as an independent standalone fat loss uh, endeavor. And uh, in many cases, you know, you might find that you have really, really positive impacts on your health, really great impacts on appetite regulation, things like that. But, you know, as a standalone fat loss um, intervention, probably leaves a little bit to be desired. Doesn't mean it's not great for your health and well-being, but if fat loss and weight loss truly are the goal, you probably want to do a mixture of doing some additional physical activity, whether it's cardio or otherwise, and then adding in a, a dietary component of some type. Um, anyway, it's important to recognize with this meta-analysis, this was uh, only one of the studies in the meta-analysis included resistance training. So that obviously is a limitation considering that most of our listeners uh, do a lot of resistance training. Um, so the question is, would the analysis, would it have turned out way different if, if resistance training were uh, included in a lot of these individual studies? I would argue probably not. Um, you know, the, the interference effect is usually where people start getting really focused when you talk about combining cardio with resistance training. Uh, Multiple meta-analyses now have shown uh, that the interference effect is pretty minimal for strength and very minimal for hypertrophy, as long as your resistance training and your endurance training component are being managed effectively. Like if you really wanted to, you could use the interference effect to mess up your gains, but you'd have to be trying pretty hard. You'd, you'd have to be doing a lot of things poorly to make that work. In most cases, or, or just already be at a really, really high level in one of the two pursuits. Correct. Yeah. 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 But but in most cases, uh, adding a little bit of cardio or endurance training into uh, your lifting program, very unlikely to have a catastrophic effect yeah. on your strength gains and, and, and even less likely when it comes to body composition hypertrophy. Uh, now, my favorite hit protocols that I like to do, if you choose to go that route, um, you could take one approach that would probably fall under the umbrella of sprint in interval training. And the distinction between high intensity interval training and sprint interval training is pretty straightforward. The sprint stuff is all out. It's maximal intensity. So I do a, a type of sprint interval training every now and then where I'll do 30 seconds all out, you know, RPE 10 maximal intensity. And then I'll spend 90 seconds below the kind, I, th I forget what the, what the term is, but in, in grad school, they mentioned like the conversation threshold, basically an, an intensity of endurance type exercise where you could still hold a pretty comfortable conversation while doing it. Right. So it, it's, I don't know how to convert that to a specific RPE, but pretty chill, pretty light. You're basically using 90 seconds to recover. And then you're right back into another 30 second sprint. So I'll do that for 10 or 15 sprints in whatever modality you choose, cycling, running, swimming, whatever the case may be. I also like a high intensity interval training protocol that's very straightforward. It's just one minute on, one minute off. The 
high intensity uh, part of it. I try to do it in RPE of like nine or 10. So like the, the way I would, I would frame that is if I'm doing it on a treadmill by the end of that minute, I'm like, man, it's kind of, kind of drifting toward the back of the treadmill a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. You, you, you feel like you're really at that nine or 10 level with the RPE out of 10, obviously. And then the, the, again, the one minute recovery, I'll either rest entirely or I'll just do some light stuff below that conversational threshold where I could easily hold a conversation while I'm doing it. Another less intense protocol I'll do is, is quite similar, but I'll do two minutes on and two minutes off. And with that, I knock the RPE down a little bit to like an eight to maybe like a nine and a half. So not knocking the intensity down a little bit, but obviously doubling the duration of the, the high intensity interval there. Uh, and if I do that, I might only do like half the round. So instead of doing 10 one minute high interval bouts, I'll do like five two minute high interval bouts. And like I said, the, the modality is not critical. Uh, cycling, swimming, rowing, running, paddling, whatever you want to do. You just want to make sure you find a safe way to do it. So you don't want to throw yourself off the back of a treadmill. You don't want to be in a precarious position where you like fatigue yourself swimming in open water. Obviously, that would be dangerous if you're not a strong swimmer. But uh, yeah, a lot of ways to do it. And high intensity interval training is, you know, a very viable way to uh, to get some of the benefits of aerobic exercise or, or cardio type or endurance type exercise. Um as long as you're not doing it so much with such high intensity that you are just completely wiped out for your lifting sessions, mm -hmm. you should be fine. Uh, but that is something to keep an eye on, obviously. And then finally, the biggest caveat is I answered this question specifically within the context of body composition. If you're adding some type of endurance training for reasons that go beyond body composition or cardiovascular health or things, cardiometabolic health, things like that. If you're trying to add in endurance type exercise to cultivate a specific physiological capacity, if you're doing it for a specific performance reason, it's a completely different answer. Obviously, when you're doing that, you need to make sure that you are tailoring your endurance type exercise to really target the key energy systems that you're trying to develop. Um, so that would be a completely different scenario where you would have to really sort out the details with your intensity, your duration, your modality. But if you're just doing it for general health and well-being or to burn a couple extra calories, um, you know, things of that nature, really not critical whether you pick one or the other. Makes sense to me.